Printable Science presents a 3D printed USB microscope mount. Before we get started, let me point out that there's a couple of tools to help you with this project. You may need to, to do some uh, cutting with uh, something like a hobby knife. If you don't have one, you can check out uh, this link, which will explain how you can print off a hobby knife so that uh, all you need to do is uh, buy some blades. You'll also uh, need uh, some glue and the most versatile choice would be epoxy. There's a link up here for our video on printing an epoxy workstation that you'll find comes in handy for this and uh, your other gluing requirements. You can pick up a USB microscope for around $20 and for the money they provide some impressive imaging capabilities. They come with an articulated stand or doohickey that allows you to adjust the microscope so it's pointing at some object and then examine the results on your computer screen. Understandably, these, these cheap mounts are, uh, are difficult to, to dial in. There's a lot of play in the joints, and at high magnification, there's uh, just too much uh, wobble uh, to be useful. We can dial this in here, focus, and there you go. And when it comes down to it, I don't really need the triple access positioning that these mounts provide. I primarily want to use this like I'd, like I'd use a microscope to, to look at the stuff on the, the table or, or flat surface. But unfortunately, the barrel at the end is uh, just uh, too small and it, and it falls over quite a bit. Uh, well, unless you're holding it with your hand, so you're fighting it all the time. And that's due to the weight of the cord and the top heavy construction. So it seemed like a good idea to design a new mount that held the microscope in a stable vertical position. We uh, first uh, thought these microscopes were all the same, but after we bought a few, we realized that wasn't the case. Although they're very similar, uh, they're, uh, that they aren't identical. Fortunately, they are uh, similar uh, enough in their profile that we could design a socket that will fit most, if, if not all, scopes. And uh, just in case there's any wobble, uh, we threw in a nut tap and, uh, and a bolt that can be tightened to keep the microscope in position. Now our microscope mount then consists of two sections. The top section, which as I mentioned previously, fits over the uh, microscope itself. It has a, an internal taper that fits over the bottom end of the microscope itself. You'll notice that the depth at which the microscope sits in the top of the section is somewhat variable. And that's why we have this, this second section. It allows us to accommodate uh, the difference in the seating of the microscope in the top section relative to the surface that you're trying to focus on. Now there's an external notch in the top section which fits into a keyway in the bottom section, and that can be locked into place with, uh, with a bolt. Now this is a standard one quarter inch thread, so you can either print off what you need or use a readily available one quarter inch bolt from your local hardware store. The exterior flare of the bottom section provides that needed footprint so that the microscope can stand in the vertical position without tipping over, and we can move it easily over the table without fear that uh, if we remove our hand that it's going to fall over. What we discovered with our first photo uh, prototype was a feature of these microscopes that we weren't initially aware of. Let me show you. If we uh, place this uh, microscope directly over a ruler and uh, focus in on it, each one of those graduations is uh, one millimeter. you can see that we have a field of about uh, five millimeters. But here's the interesting thing. If you continue to turn the focusing knob to the extreme 
of its rotation the other way, then you get a very impressive increase with a field width. See that? It's a lot more magnified of about one millimeter covering the entire field. Very impressive. So at the minimum focal length of one of these microscopes, you actually have two different magnification factors. But here's the thing, if you move the microscope even a small amount away from its minimum focal length, you lose that high magnification factor. You can still have the low magnification factor, but not the high. When we realized that, we needed to ensure that our top section had to be shorter than the end of the microscope and that the bottom section needed to allow for the microscope to be placed close enough to the surface so that we could focus on the extreme magnification provided. The less powerful magnification is useful too, but with our mount system, you have the flexibility to move the scope even further away from the object in order to increase the field of view. So while the magnification remains constant, you can cram more into the field that you're examining. Here's an example. I have a small coin and uh, here it is at uh, extreme magnification. Now if I focus it to, to the other extreme, I have a, the coin in focus again, but at less magnification. But suppose I want to have uh, as much of the coin in my field of view. With our mount, it's just a simple matter. I loosen the bolt on the lower section and just pop up the intersection until it's as high as it can go. And then I refocus at this new height. And as you can see, we have a lot more in the field of view that we're looking for. While it's uh, fun to look at objects under magnification, at Printable Science our main interest in these scopes is measuring distance. So we printed off a scale on our regular 2D printer to serve what's known as a reticle or graticule so that we can quickly and easily measure small objects that we're looking at. Now you can print this target on paper, as I've got in this example, or even better, you can uh, print it on a uh, transparency. That way you're looking through it rather than just at the surface itself. And if we use paper, we'll have to cut back on the paper so it doesn't obs fully obscure the, uh, the view of what the uh, microscope is uh, pointing at. Now the PDF file has the target within a large circle which uh, matches uh, the uh, size of the base of the lower section if you printed it on paper. You'll first uh, want to uh, slice the sheet along uh, the top half of your field so it'll be visible and this is where we use our our hobby knife and a straight edge. You'll see that there's uh, some guidelines on either side of the paper that match up to the uh, top of the uh, ruler and we just slice that and then cut that away and out of there. And then we place our uh, scope on top of that and then we uh, just uh, glue it in place. And then we can give that uh, glue a, a chance to dry. Now, if possible, you'll want to print these targets in black ink only. If we're printing these reticles in color, then the resulting image is going to be a mess of colored dots that isn't going to be particularly helpful. Now, 
while our reticle serves us well enough at low magnification, you can see if we focus in to our highest magnification that things kind of uh, dissolve into uh, just a pile of dots, which uh, may be good enough for the work you're working on, but uh, it may not be exactly the effect you're looking for. And so uh, if you want to use the reticle at high magnification, you'll want to print them off on uh, a printer with as high a resolution that you can find. Now, most microscopes also come with a sheet of their own reticles that you can use uh, if you don't like uh, the quality of home printed ones. And uh, there's a, a variety of uh, targets uh, on them that we can just take a look at here. The reticle supplied has a much uh, cleaner image and you can uh, glue that to the bottom of your uh, of your uh, scope as uh, as you wish and there's a variety of different uh, different features available there so if you want to uh, preserve the uh, reticle that your uh, microscope came with or perhaps you uh, want to have a number of different bases uh, you can uh, you always have the option of uh, purchasing reticles specifically made for microscopy they're usually around five bucks and there's more than one supplier of them on ebay here at printable science we managed to track down some really nice reticles on acetate that are just a single 50 millimeter wide scale with 0.1 millimeter grad gradations now if you're interested in getting a hold of one of them or perhaps a whole bunch uh, you can visit our Patreon page for more details. You may want to start by uh, just printing off the uh, top piece and a single bolt first. This will allow you to ensure that your USB microscope fits uh, into the mount and that the bolt screws into uh, the uh, uh, nut properly. Remember the tip of your scope should always uh, extend beyond beyond the bottom edge of the uh, top uh, part of the mount. The bolt and the built-in nut are a standard one quarter inch thread, so you can always use a one quarter inch steel bolt from the hardware store to secure your mount. We printed both uh, pieces of our mount in PLC with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, two perimeters and a 0.2 millimeter layer height. The mount sections were uh, printed uh, at 20% infill and the bolts at 80% infill. Assembly is straightforward. You insert a bolt into the both uh, the top uh, and uh, lower sections. And then uh, check out the clear plastic section of your microscope. On some models it's glued on, but on others it'll, it'll just pop off. So if it comes uh, off with not much effort, you should probably remove it and that'll help you to get even closer uh, to your object and increase uh, the field of view at your highest magnification. With or without the clear plastic section, slip the microscope uh, into the uh, top part of our mount, push it down until it's seated as deeply as possible, and then tighten the bolt to hold it in place. Then slip the microscope and top mount into the bottom piece with the notch lining up with the keyway. And then you can uh, focus on something, even at this magnification. And when you're happy with your focus, just tighten the bolt to secure it. That being done, your USB microscope and mount are ready for use. Thanks for watching. And won't you help by becoming an important part of the Printable Science family and making this channel more valuable and successful? You can help us out by taking the time to watch this video in its entirety and other Printable Science videos as well while perhaps your 3D printer is printing off this project. Please leave comments and questions below. That will help us to continue to create useful videos and 3D STL files that are printer ready and help you to maximize the power and utility of your 3D printer. Your feedback is very important. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button. And if you have just a moment, won't you show your support by clicking the subscribe button below. 
If you want to make sure you don't miss our upcoming videos on 3D printing, you'll want to click on the notify bell as well. And please consider supporting Printable Science on Patreon using the link supplied below. You can become one of our Patreon supporters for as little as a dollar a month, and it'll provide you with lots of extras and additional information, as well as going a long way to defray the cost of making these files and videos. Down below, you'll also find a link where you can download a copy of the STL and PDF files from Thingiverse so that you can create your own USB microscope mount. As always, you can download a copy of the STL files for this and other projects directly from our website. The latest files and a discussion board on the USB 3D printed microscope mount are available at the printablescience.com website, where all the science that fits, we print.